In this video, I'm going to teach you how to install VST plugins, both VST2 and VST3 formats. And I'm using a Windows computer. So let's take a look at how it's done. The first step that we're going to take is we're going to define a folder location on our computer where all of our VST2 plugins and VST3 plugins are going to be installed to. And so in this case, we're going to open up Windows Explorer. And then down the side here, we're going to click on this PC. And you'll be familiar with how many hard drives you've got in your computer and sort of where you want to install them. So in my case, I'm going to just use my local disk, my sort of main disk drive, which is C in my case. Yours may be different. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to open it up. And then inside of here, I'm just going to right click in some uh, gray area, some negative space, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go new folder. And I'm going to name that folder VST2. Then I'll right click and I'll go new folder and I'm going to write VST3. Okay, so these are going to be the two folders that I point the VST installers to, to put their program files inside of when we're installing a VST. So now that we've given our computer a location for all of those VST files to be installed to, we actually need a VST to install. So the VST that we're going to use in this example is Vital. Now, Vital can be free. Um, which is why I thought it would be a good VST to use. It's also likely to be really handy to a lot of you who are first um, like beginners that are starting to learn music production as well as sound design. Because I think Vital is the best VST for you to start off with if you're learning how to design sounds. So we go to their website, um, which I'll leave a link for in the video description. You'll have to make an account, but if you go ahead and scroll down here, you'll see that there's a bunch of different options. So you can just get it for free. And I would um, suggest that maybe right at the beginning, free would be great, but maybe in the future you could pay um, a little bit to the creator because he has made a really fantastic synthesizer here. So I'm going to go ahead and click basic free, and then I'm going to hit create an account to continue and I've already got an account so I'll go ahead and log in. If you want to learn Ableton fast and in a very structured way, take a look on my website at collectiveintelligencemusic.com for my Ableton Inside Out series. It'll take you from a beginner level all the way to an experienced user. The link's in the video description, go over there and check it out. And here we are logged in to the website. And in my case, I am on Windows, and I imagine most of you are if you've watched this far, um, but if you have other operating systems, you can see the download is there. Um, I am going to go ahead and click Windows Executable, and we'll download that, and just pay attention to where it's downloading to. In this case, it's going to my Downloads folder, which is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and we're going to download that. And then once it's finished downloading, we'll jump into that Downloads folder. I'm inside my Downloads folder, and you can see the Vital installer here. So we'll go ahead and we'll double click that to open it up. Um, you may not be able to see this window, but um, Windows is just asking me, are you sure you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And I'm going to hit yes to that. Um, and now the uh, installer has popped up. And we're going to thoroughly read the end user agreement. We're going to hit, I accept the agreement, and we'll hit next. So this window's asking us what we want to install because we can install a few different versions of Vital. So for example, um, we'll select custom installation and you'll see that standalone VST, VST3 and CLAP are all different options. And so what the standalone is, is standalone is referring to an actual program on your computer that would be able to be opened on your computer's desktop. So in our case, it's not that useful to us because we want a VST that we can load inside of Ableton, but some of you may want to install that on your desktop for whatever reason. So in my case, I'm not going to tick that. I want to install the VST3 version and the regular VST2 version. And then some of you may have Bitwig and you may want to install Clap. I think Bitwig is the only door that supports Clap. 
Clap's a new protocol for um, plugin developers to use. It wor- works different to the way VST does and offers some advantages. So, um, But not all digital audio workstations will support it. So at this window, it's asking us, um, select your VST3 plugin directory and then click next. Okay, so what we do is we hit browse. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select VST3 and we'll go OK and we'll go next. Okay, so that was the folder that we made at the beginning on our um, computer's hard drive. Now we'll hit browse for the VST plugin directory and that'll be VST2. We'll go OK and we'll hit next. And here it's going to give us a summary of what we're about to install. Um, So it's a custom installation and it's just VST3 and VST and we'll hit install. Now, in your case, if you're not using VST2 plugins and you're all VST3, then don't install the VST2 plugin, just get VST3. I'm just showing you an example for both. And vice versa, if you're not using 3 and you're only using 2, then yeah, go ahead. So I'll hit finish. And now would be um, the time to go to Ableton. But just quickly before that we do that, we'll go this PC. We'll go ahead and we will double click the local disk and we'll see what's inside here. So if we open up the VST2 folder, you'll see that vital.dll has been placed inside of this folder. And so dll is the file extension for a VST2 plugin. Okay. And if we go back to the VST3 folder, you'll see that it's vital.vst3. Okay, so they've got different file extensions. Let's take a look inside of Ableton now. So Ableton's in front of me here, and I'm going to open up the preferences. And there's a number of ways we can do that. We can go uh, ahead and click options up on the main taskbar. And it's just under my camera, unfortunately, but right down the bottom is preferences. And you can see the shortcut here, um, control plus comma. So we'll go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut to open that up. So control and comma. And then we want to navigate to the tab called plugins, which happens to already be open. Um, And it looks like it's scanning my plugins for some reason. I'll just click cancel. Now, here you'll see we have the VST2 plugin custom folder, and we've got the VST3 plugin custom folder. So on the VST2 custom folder, we want to hit browse, and we want to come to our PC, and then we want to scroll down, and we want to select our VST2 folder. So we would want to click that, and then click select. Um, now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to change it from the folder folder that I'm already using, um, but that's what you'll do. So you'll go ahead and point it to that folder, and then you'll do the exact same thing for the VST3. You'll come to your computer, you'll find VST3, you'll hit select folder, and then um, Ableton's going to tell you that the folder it's looking into is your VST2 folder. So you can see that um, both my VST2 and 3 plugins are in this folder, and that's not a proper way to organize it, so don't do it the way I've done it. Do two separate folders, um, but just giving you an example, that's why I'm not going to go ahead and select it. And then you want to just make sure that you've got the Use VST2 Plugin Custom Folder clicked on for both of them, and then you want to go ahead and click uh, Rescan. Okay, And what that's going to do is it's going to make Ableton look inside of those folders and see if it can find any plugins. And then once your plugins, um, once it's scanned, then inside of the plugin directory in your browser window, you will be able to navigate and find the plugins that you have installed. And once you have those plugins installed, it can be quite handy to... Um, organize them a little bit. So I'll give you a little bit of a pro tip for that. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of a pro tip for if you're dealing with some plugins that don't have the ability to be installed in your own folder. So for example, if we wanted this plugin here to be inside of a folder that we could have quick access to, we're able to right click on the plugin and we can give it a color. And you'll see that I've already gone ahead and given names to all of my um, collection directories. And yours may not 
have names already, but you can go ahead and name them. So if you wanted to do that, you can hit edit, um, right click and rename stuff and you can tick what you want to show and what you don't want to show um, there. So in our case, we'll go back to plugins. We're going to go clean sleep and this is a is a is like an EQ tool. So we could say that it's a mixing tool. So we can go ahead and click mixing and now there's a little gray dot next to it. And if we hit the mixing folder, you can see that the Clean Sweep plugin has been dropped in there. And we can right click and clear the color and go back and see that now it's been taken out. So if you want to add your plugins to collection folders so that you know exactly where things are, then you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if you want to quickly find things, if I want to quickly find like my Fab Filter plugins, I can write Pro Q in the folder and then it's just going to narrow everything down to what's using that actual name. And you'll see I've got Pro Q3 there and then I can just quickly drag it in. So that's a way of just very quickly getting to the plugin that you want. In some cases, some VSTs don't actually have a proper installer. They may just have that .dll file or that .vst3 file. And if you extract them from a zip folder, and that's all that you can see, then just click and drag them and drop them into your VST2 or VST3 folder, and then open Ableton, check that it's looking in the right folder, and hit scan. If it's a plugin manufacturer like Native Instruments or um, Waves, ugh, yuck, or some other VST manufacturer, and they don't give you the ability to say where you want it to be installed, you're going to have to go ahead and track down whereabouts it is on your computer. You can see here that I've got another folder that's just called VST Plugins, right? And it's got some random stuff installed inside of it. And I want Ableton to also look inside of this folder as well as the other folder. But inside Ableton, it doesn't give us the option to look at multiple folders. So what can we do? We can go ahead and just hit back here. I can right click on this. And I can ask Windows to create a shortcut for this. So if I go show more options and then I find where it is, create shortcut. And it asks me, Windows can't create a shortcut here. Do you want it to be placed on the desktop? Yes, I do. So go ahead and place the shortcut on the desktop and then we'll jump over to the desktop. So you can see that there's been a shortcut that's been made on our desktop for the plugin. We can go ahead and open up the local disk drive and find um, our VST2 folder because these were all VST2s. What I can do is I can click and drag and put that shortcut inside of this folder. Then we go into Ableton and we hit rescan. And Ableton will then look inside of that shortcut folder and then find that other folder and then look at all those plugins. And that's a way that you can consolidate everything so that Ableton knows exactly where everything is for your plugin directory. So that's how you can install VST plugins for Ableton in Windows. I hope that that was helpful. A couple of little pro tips there at the end for you if you're struggling with the way that the plugin folders work. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again soon.